Okay, um, today we're going to do some little work with um, masking fluid. Um, you can see this sheen here. That is masking fluid, Winsor Newton art masking fluid. There are different ones, but I find this one seems to be the best for me. <clears throat> I have to store it upside down. It's got the consistency of rubber cement, but it's toned with a, a slight color that's different than the white of the paper, so you can see where you're putting it. <clears throat> like rubber cement, it's kind of hard to apply. Uh, sometimes I use the um, end of a paintbrush stick to apply it. Sometimes a, an actual stick. Sometimes a brush that has been dipped in, <clears throat> in uh, dishwashing liquid. But I store it upside down with some cling wrap so that I can, it tends not to um, clump up inside that way. So since I applied it in advance, I wanted to just show you how it worked. So I poured a bunch of it here on this. And when I want to take it off, <clears throat> this is all I do. I rub it. And just like rubber cement, it kind of rubs off. You see? I rub it off. And what it does is it protects the white of the paper <clears throat> below. Now you have to use good paper because I, I noticed that um, when I was using a very soft textured paper that the surface of the paper, if I put tape or anything on it, was coming off. You have to use it on a paper that you know is going to stay intact and be perfect when you remove the <clears throat> when you remove the the uh, wet masking fluid. Now this paper is a Arches hot press um, smooth. <clears throat> but this one here is a Fabiano, uh, what they call knot or knot, which means not smooth and not rough. So it's an in-between in texture. It's Fabiano. I've cut it from a giant roll that I have, <clears throat> which makes it very hard to um, remove. I have to stretch it out on a big, big table. It's a very big roll. And now, <clears throat> what I want to do, I don't always use masking fluid to protect my whites, but here I'm going to be doing a number of waves with some splatters and I want to have a, 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 a sky that is very blended. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, I put some here, I put this color I've chosen today, it's called Rose Door. That means rose outside. Is that what that is? No, that's Potter's Pink. Potter's Pink by Windsor Newton. And this one here is Wisteria by Daniel Smith. Um, this one is by Holbin. It's called Horizon Blue. Horizon Blue. This was the Wisteria. <clears throat> and in this one, I put two clumps of paint. I put the Cerulean Blue by Daniel Smith and Payne's Blue Gray. So it's a bluish Payne's Gray, also by Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith is sort of my go-to color. Uh, I, I'm, I really like their paints and um, I like the consistency of them and the intensity of them. This is Ultramarine Violet, also by Payne's Gray. Now, if you really <clears throat> want to have a good sense of the possible colors that you might get from a manufacturer, you can order their color dots. Um, Daniel Smith puts out about 250 color dots, and they're actual dots of paint. 
And, and you can buy them for under $20 usually for the four pages of color dots. And <clears throat> I sometimes have gone on trips with nothing but my pages of color dots to use for a week to paint um, because there's a fair amount of paint in each dot. So it's a really great thing to do and then you get to see which colors you really like and how they behave because some are transparent, some are granulating. <clears throat> I have um, written G next to um, some of them for granulating. Uh, some of them are opaque. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, my allergies are really acting up today. But I would, I would definitely advise <coughs> going to the Daniel Smith site or any other manufacturer that you really like <coughs> and ordering their color dots. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up these colors. <coughs> what I've done is I've just sprayed water in them. I'm going to mix up some colors. This is the potter's pink. I'm going to mix it up because <coughs> I'm going to pour the paint on uh, with the masking fluid since I don't have to worry about um, <coughs> staying within the lines because I've protected the white areas um, with the masking fluid. This is the Horizon Blue by Holbein. So you can see I already have three manufacturers here that I use. <clears throat> this is the combination of both cerulean blue and Payne's gray blue hue. I wanted a more I wanted it even more blue than I'm going to add a little bit more <clears throat> from my spray bottle. I want that. I can feel that it's not quite dissolving is there. So it's a very bluish. Um, it's gray. <clears throat> and this one is the ultramarine violet. Um, I am not liking that. I am not liking that color the way it's coming out there <clears throat> relative to the other colors. So what I'm going to do is get some <clears throat> I always have my pliers handy because um, these tubes do close up really quickly. I'm going to put some Cabrizol violet in there. <clears throat> so those are the colors I'm going to play with. I wanted a dark violet, but that ultramarine violet didn't give me a dark enough color. So I'm adding some additional color. And I managed to get that all over my hands. Just give me a minute while I wipe it off. Now, I don't, I don't often use these pads, but when I do use them, I reuse them and reuse them and reuse them. This is a nothing more than a puppy piddle pad. Um, since I have a, a whole lot of puppies right now, um, I've got a box of pads. <clears throat> but I'll use that over and over and over again. It might last me six months or more one pad because I'll let it dry and I can just keep pouring more stuff on it. But I figured for, for you guys today, I'd, um, I'd celebrate by making a clean pack. Oh, there, that's better, you see? <clears throat> I wanted a darker violet uh, that would work for me. Now, <clears throat> we're just going to do the first stage of this today because then we have to let it dry. But that is, um, <clears throat> I'm going to take a big brush, and this water is already very, very colored. A little bit different, big brush. And <clears throat> essentially just wet this whole paper. It's all taped down to the board. 
and <clears throat> sorry for the little springtime allergies already. Essentially what I'm going to do is just literally I'm going to have the light. I always work from a black and white photo and so to have, and I always make a decision at the beginning where is my light going to be. I don't care what the photo says. I don't mind changing everything up. I use the photo for the details of the rigging and the shape of the sails, some of the shape of the waves, but all the shadows and light and, and um, colors and textures. <clears throat> Let's see how these colors work together. Hopefully they will work together. I want more of this light wisteria over here. Um, <clears throat> intensity of what you see when you first put it on. So I'm letting a little of that color come down and it doesn't matter if some of it sits on top of the... Okay. <clears throat> now what I wanted was some lightness. <clears throat> I want a little more of that blue down here like I had over there, but I don't want it to creep up too much into the top. So but I wanted a little more blue down by the horizon. <clears throat> That's coming together pretty nice. And now I'm going to take a little more blue here, but I'm going to bring in that Payne's Gray. Um, it's going to be, a, it's very dark and dramatic. Hopefully it's not too dark and too dramatic, but it, while it's still very wet, if I want to, need to, <clears throat> I can spray it and but I think it's coming along rather well so far so good <clears throat> but the problem that I have I seeing is that I didn't adequately mix the paint so I'm going to spray some of that down because there's there were a couple of clumps of paint there that's okay a little bit of this mixture of cabrazole violet in that corner over there <coughs> with the Payne's gray and blue um, and see how that is. Like I say, I can always spray it. <coughs> I can use my more fine atomizer to get some of that To like that. So this is just um, for this morning. You can see why I have my, you know, I have 
painting set up all over the place in the house, um, ha partially done because they get to this stage, you do a little bit, you think about it, you plan it, you arrange your paints, and then you apply them. And I don't mind that some of that color has come down here into the waves and into the boat. And I'll take some of that away from the edge. <clears throat> and I'll even take some of it away from that. I don't have to. I could leave it to sit there on the... <clears throat> don't want it to seep back in <clears throat> or create a blossom on the edge from the wetness. Where it sits, where it, could, where it pools next to the tape. <clears throat> and if, it, if, it, if you leave it there, it can create a blossom back into the paint which would be, unless you want that blossom, isn't, you need to try to avoid it. <clears throat> so I have, I want to have some color there that doesn't look completely, some flecks of something. So I sprayed it with my atomizer. Here I have something too, I don't like that. <clears throat> you know, it's hard to get the paint to be 100% mixed and clear. <clears throat> I think that's not a bad start. Um, I may... Now the question is, am I going to leave the horizon light or am I going to <clears throat> put a little more of this Paints gray down here. I think I'm going to put a little more of that paints gray down there to um, and let it go down with my atomizer. So I have two kinds of atomizer. One is a sort of uh, bigger droplets, <clears throat> and this one is made for watercolor. It's Holbein's Artist Watercolor as an atomizer. And sometimes I put color in them, and I have a bunch of them uh, for my classes, and sometimes I put color in them, and I can spray color on. But mostly I use it for water. <coughs> yeah, I think I wanted to have that just a bit more of a sense of, because that will dry much lighter, but what I want is a sense of this sailboat being pushed from winds that are related to this kind of storm coming in <clears throat> from the left. So if you want to get very, very, and this will dry, and I'll be able to use it over and over and over again. Um, and since I need them for the puppies anyway, so. <clears throat> I have nine puppies in the other room. Mommy's just been out to do her business and um, feed everybody. And she'll be looking for another meal for me. Now these, <clears throat> I'm just gonna put them to the side, uh, let them dry put a little more paint in each one of them because um, <clears throat> when I come in and do my final work, I want to use some of these colors very lightly in the sail.
everybody. Um, I'm working on a, a sailboat. It's not the same as the one in the photo. Let me see if I can get the photo in there. Yeah, just so you can take a look. But the sails are in the same position. Uh, it's a bigger boat and it's got uh, bigger waves and it's a little more sunk into the water and um, it's got more people on it but I just wanted to indicate to you <clears throat> the general concept um, of the sails because I, I do like to try to get the um, sails correct and the mast and the ratio of um, mast boat correct so um, you had seen earlier the washes that I did and I still have a little bit of those paint colors uh, in my containers here um, I have taken I you know you just wet it and it reconstitutes and I had taken some of this colors of the wisteria and done some washes on the sails to kind of, and also on some of the areas of the waves. And that was, I, I just did that a little bit on the sails like this. to indicate some reflection from the surrounding sky. But leaving the sails predominantly white. Now, you might remember that all this area of waves and the sails was covered with masking fluid. So I removed the masking fluid in the way that I talked to you about. And, um, and then I used the, the blue a little bit in the sail and the wisteria to blend in with this part of the sky in terms of harmonizing with it and also indicating that the colors of the sky are somewhat um, reflected in the waves in the sails. Now the thing that I want to do when I get my glasses Okay, I'm, I'm back. The thing that I want to show you the next step is once you remove the masking fluid, it's not very precise. And so what needs to be done is negative painting. Now negative painting means when you paint around something, you make that, you define the, how that thing looks. So for example, if I were to do a little bit of negative painting around this little bit of wave. What I did already when the masking fluid was on there is I remember I poured the color over it, the dark blue. But now what I want to do is now that, 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 now that I've rubbed the masking fluid off, I want to create, define how some of the splashes look underneath, you know, showing that there's a shadow side under the wave. And this negative painting, instead of it just being a blob, of course these waves are not blobs, I'm taking a mixture of blue and black, any dark blue and any black, so in my case, I'm using some phthalo blue right now. 
and some ivory black. <coughs> Just testing how I'm testing how I want to try to do this. And of course, as we go into the um, wave area, the blue is not as dark as it is underneath the the white wave and it becomes a lighter blue and so I can define that with a little bit of cobalt blue which is a lighter sort of medium color blue I'm not completely happy with the way that's looking, but let's see how, we'll just keep it up for a little while and see if we can make this work. And I'm using that cobalt blue in a couple of other areas to begin to define. The movement of wave. I had already put a little bit of the sky blue in here as a reflection from the sky and a little bit of wisteria also in the wave. But I want to try to see if I can get some movement in here that begins to make this wave look like a wave. I'm using two brushes so that I don't have to wash out the color of the dark blue from the one brush. The other brush is, um, is the lighter. So I'm going to take some of the lighter blue and blend that darker blue in. And there's already a blue in there that was between the masking fluid. So it's starting to look a little bit more. I'm going to take the light blue and try to define some shadow behind wave next to the sail because it's kind of the white on the white is not showing. There's a white splashing in front of the sail there. Now this, doing the waves is going to take quite a bit of time and because um, I'm going to do them carefully and try to have them be um, a, a difference between indicating them and actually being precise all the way through some waves out here also. Sometimes I put in a little more masking fluid and I want to cover up some of that later because it just looks like a great big blob but at least it's, it's easier to um, differentiate some of that and make it a little bit less um, of a blob and begin to cover up some of that white. That's easier than trying to salvage white later. Some people seem very good at put laying down the masking fluid in a more precise way. I've tried all different techniques for 
doing that and have never been successful at getting much more than these blobs, but then working around them with uh, negative painting. So, and then what I want to do, so this is the beginning of how um, I'm going to try to create movement of waves and just working one at a time, looking at it and seeing if somehow how do I make that look alive and wave-like. And um, and there's often a little bit of shadow. Don't forget these colors always dry a bit. lighter. So that's the beginning of that and I'm just I'm showing you the technique because I'm obviously going to have to do a fair amount of this offline and then come back to you with it. But I want to do enough so that you can see how it's done. But basically these waves are very different and um, they have a lot of little edges splashing out and splattering out. And so there's a need to get a sense of the movement. <clears throat> and then within a wave where it's really curving at the base of it, you will see some shadow. So there's a lighter blue, a little darker blue, and then bright white. So this is the beginning of that. And <clears throat> what I want to do is show you now how to make some splatters. Um, I'm going to take some of this. Um, yeah, I'm going to take some of this. titanium white in, um, in blush. Titanium is one of the transparent colors compared to zinc white and uh, Chinese white it's more transparent but blush is a little bit more opaque and thick as a color than watercolor so it's a slight variation. But what I'm going to do is just take some of that and put it on a <clears throat> toothbrush and see if I can get some splashes. You see? See that? I hope you can see that. Okay, so you take a toothbrush and, you, and dip it in your paint. You don't want it too wet because you don't want to get a blob but then point it at where you're going and get some splashes. Look at that. And there you have the beginning of the process. Normally I do the splashes at the very end after I finish all the waves, but I wanted to show you that just so you know how that is done. Now the next thing I want to show you is I had already um, drawn in in pencil these lines and I've gone over a few of them in a small amount of detail, not very much, to make them a little darker because they got light under the paint. And I put in the mast and um, I'll just show, accentuate that just a little bit. Now that it's dried, I want it just a little bit darker, at least on one side. So there's a mass there. And as it curves, of course, it's a little darker. Okay. Now, the, the next thing 
is to take, I'm taking, going to take black with a little bit of blue in it and show some people. Because the boat is tipping this way and in all the racing paint photographs that I have, and I have quite a lot of, accumulated quite a lot of racing photographs and watch some races, there's always um, the people lined up on the side against the wind pulling the sail to balance the boat. And sometimes they even hang over the side a little bit, but that's, I'm not going to do that because that would almost be a um, hard for people to understand and what's going on there. And I don't want it to look scary. I don't like my paintings to look scary unless there's some reason to have them look scary. But this is very much a sailing vessel in a race and um, the people are in, it, are in it in quite good control. And so here, you know, with people, the main thing is there's a little head and then there's shoulders. shoulders. Okay. And sometimes there might be this one's going to maybe face the other way a little bit. Um, but this one here is down here and shoulders. Okay. So really have to show the neck. People more or less see it in their own mind's eye. So, but just indicate the people. There'll be another one here, another one here. Doing something there, okay. different, but the others are mostly all leaning. And there's no reason to show very much detail in here. This is dark and uh, you can just make it a little bit loose. Uh, you know, it's in the shadow and it's dark. So I'm just going to um, make there's some little spots here and there of lighter color, not showing anything precise in there, okay? It's just to indicate this action. might even put um, the indication of maybe a hat on one, maybe a hat on another one, just to play with it, just to make it a little bit Here, this is a really nice wave here. Um, this is coming up, and there'll be all this. The most important waves to try to define are the ones that are against the dark of the boat, because. I will be drawn to the area of contrast between the light and the dark. This is the sail, and uh, there's 
so. Some sky behind there. So I'm just going to do this very, in a very relaxed way. Some things a little different here and there. I began to indicate lighter in the lighter blue. Begin to indicate that um, that wave close to the boat. You know, with the lighter blue, the cobalt blue, not the blue black mixture. Put some shadow in here. You can see the wave is coming up and bursting. A little bit of the dark one again, dropping it in there. So it blends with the other color. Yep, and here's a bit more. to step back every now and then. This is a good time to make sure you are standing while you're painting and checking out that you're not putting in too much detail or covering up too much of those waves. So um, I'm going to take a little more, I'm going to take a little bit of the very dark um, Cabrizol Violet and mix a little bit of that with the black because I want to make sure that this area in here really sinks in as deep shadow. Okay, because I see it's drying a little bit too light. And so by adding the very dark violet, Cabrasol violet, to the ivory black, and glazing over some of this. This is going to sink in here, which is what I'm wanting. Because that is sort of a deep space in there. Um, and it gives you, I want to give the feeling that there's some different brush strokes, some scrumbling stroke to indicate that there is some stuff going on in there. Maybe there are some tools or there's some um, different parts of the boat that are key for navigation, rudder control or whatever. And so I just want to show that it's not flat, empty space by creating a little bit of, and this is a railing for safety. But there are bodies and feet and there. Okay, I think um, that begins to let's blend a little bit this in here. So it blends a little bit with the people. Okay, and then I just as I did before, I'm gonna take some of this. Now normally I would wait until this was completely dry, but I just want to show you, I've got a little bit of this white, that's a gouache paint, not a watercolor, but a gouache. It's, a, it's like a, a water media, but it's um, thicker and more opaque. And I just want to show you that the technique is to use the toothbrush, a very stiff bristle, and see some of the bit 
more there. I think you can see that. Let me just check. starting to be evening and I'll be going out to feed the horses pretty soon. But I think I can show you, um, I'm losing my rigor, that long, long, narrow brush that makes the kind of delicate calligraphic lines. And I just want to extend some of this white paint. Um, the white titanium white gouache and make some thin splash lines. Okay, I just want to make some thin splash lines. And um, just brighten up the color a little bit. It at the edge of this big splash and make some of those lines come up on top of that sail. I decided to go with the titanium white because it's a transparent white even though I'm using a gouache so it won't look too opaque and kind of like when you do opaque it doesn't glow so it makes like a little bit like dead space. Uh, so I didn't want to do, this is kind of a, a balance in terms of adding some white but not having it go all the way to a, an opaque zinc white. Um, now I put a little bit of um, um, turquoise or teal, however you want to call it, um, in some of this, some of these waves, because sometimes where the light shows through, it has that wonderful turquoise shade. But I don't want to overdo it, but I just have it now and then. So I wanted to show you that. Just makes the wave pop a little bit. I already had some of the wisteria in here and some cobalt blue. So I'm just having some of these waves really stretch their splash out. I'm just making that up as I go along. I have the wave coming up, then going down, coming up, and going up and then coming down. So I just want to accentuate that a little bit where it's coming down. And where it's coming up so that you get a sense of the motion of the wave. But it's not precise. I'm not a realist painter. I would say I'm just trying to create an impression without making it too much of a sloppy mess. See, I think I might have some. I've got the wheel indicated there with a little bit of white. You can see the um, there's some rope indicated and like a, a weather thing and some flags. Some flags indicated. Uh, there's some numbers indicated. Um, to identify the boat, but not precisely, just roughly indicated. And because um, this isn't a commission for somebody, a boat owner, here's some writing here also indicated. I think I need, uh, I 
made a mistake over here. I need to indicate just a little bit more the, the C behind this sail because that, that sail starts there. It doesn't start lower. Okay. Some little thing like that can really be a distraction for somebody who is a sailor looking at this. So, um, well, I've been on sailboats. I'm not a sailor. Love the sea, but I um, would find it daunting to be able to master the skill of sailing. Okay, so, and then here it kind of levels out. I've got some scroll scrubbling here to indicate where it bubbles around a bit. And um, there's a little bit of indication of more waves coming in. I think that's pretty much it for the um, using the rigger. And I'm going to do more of the splashing that I talked to you about. I'll put a little more water in this white, mix it up a little bit. Not too much because I don't want it too diluted in order to show. It has to be fairly thick, but yet it can't be clumped. It has to be dissolved in the water. Um, so for some things I like to use these little plastic containers, which I get at the local market. I bought a bunch of them. And, um, and what's nice about them is that once once, even though they're wet, you can stack them and it, it, they don't touch each other, so they don't make a mess. And they can dry and you can just wet, wet them and reconstitute the... So here I am with the toothbrush, stiff bristled one. Um, here it's important to have that wave really shown. Um, a lot of splashing at the edge of that one. This one coming up again, lots of splashing. And I want some splashing over here at that one, that one in the back. And there's one back there. Um, down here a little bit. There, that will mask a little bit the back of that sailboat and so that one doesn't get preoccupied with the, the detail. I think that's getting pretty close to enough. I don't want to overdo it. I may be overdoing it. So that's it. This is a finished piece. Let me see if I can pull it in so that you can see it well enough. Let's see. I'll have to get behind the camera and see if you can see it pretty well. But this is basically a finished piece. I hope you enjoyed it. You're welcome to come and see more of my videos. I'm posting them not only on Facebook for the quarantine period. I'm in week five of my, my isolation, although for most people it's work three, week three or four. I started a little early. And... Um, And I wanted to do this, especially for my neighbors who um, had hoped we would do more watercolor classes. And, um, but it's also posted, if you um, go to Sandra Quantro on YouTube, it'll be posted on YouTube as well. So you can share it with people if you like. Thank you for visiting with me, and I hope you enjoyed it.